Welcome to Knit and Kitten podcast number 23. My name is Mallory, otherwise known as Just a Dose of Love all around the internet. So you can find me on Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, and Ravelry under Just a Dose of Love, though I am most active on Instagram. We are back on August 11th after a bit of an unofficial, unintentional summer hiatus, and it's about 3 o'clock p.m. where I live in Edmonton, Alberta, with my favorite feline and soulmate, Sasika Sonia, Chris Connor, and a snake named Heidi. For any returning viewers, thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me. I know it's been a few months for sure. And for any new viewers, this is a video podcast about knitting and crafting and just kind of whatever else happens to be going on um, in general in my life in that chunk of time. And I'm going to jump mostly right into our first segment, which is what is on my needles. So, what is on my needles? Hmm. Project number one is the St. Patrick's Day sock pattern. That it, it's, a, it's a pattern of my own design. It's called Irish Guild. And I'm knitting it up in the Cascade color way number 5715, also known as Avocado. It's on their Heritage Base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon blend. Now this is the second sock of the pair that I'll be making. The first one is already finished, so um, here is the little bit that I've done so far. You can see I haven't done a whole lot on this little sock. I've got uh, basically what's up to the first cable on the cuff. So this doesn't really show you what the whole sock is going to look like, but it does show you the cute little Addy circulars that I love to knit with so much. Um, actually, I lied. These are not Addies. These are high, high, sharp, and they're 2.25 millimeters or US size one. And here's a better shot of this gorgeous avocado colorway. I am a super fan of the Cascade yarns in their sock bases just because they are so soft when they knit up. Um, I haven't worn through a pair yet on the heels or toes, but having said that, it's been really hot out and I don't really wear my knitted socks during the summer. Now, I did want to show you what this sock looks like all knit up. So, let me just put this on my foot mannequin here. It's so funny, I literally just took this sock off this foot mannequin uh, and put a different one on there. but. Here we go. So this is what it looks like all knit up. So this was my St. Patrick's Day sock pattern. I released it on St. Patrick's Day and honestly, I just love still, I still love how all of the cables go on the front. Um, so there's this, all this cable work here. You get these little loop-de-loops and a, a central cable down the front. And then there's a cable down the back as well and little itty bitty itty bitty one by one cables down each side and on my sock that's in progress how i mentioned that i'm to the first cable on the cuff so that's that's where i am right now getting to that point right there silly me i lost my pattern printout so i <laughs> was like well this is where my first cable is supposed to be but i would rather not Keep knitting without my pattern so that's kind of why we're at a standstill the printer in the house is out of ink <laughs> uh, and why don't we have more ink and why haven't I printed it off somewhere else uh, I just keep forgetting to so that's why we're at such a standstill on that okay that is item number one that is on my needles item number two this is a funny one I am part of a WhatsApp group chat with people who live all around the world and one of my friends in this group chat is named Stippin and we're like, oh, you know it would be really fun if we could turn knitting into a drinking game. So what we decided was I would knit him this scarf but only when we're drinking together because occasionally we do have uh, video calls, video chats, um, 
you know, group chat wide invitations for people to do like just a video call where we may be drinking wine or other things <laughs> and that's the only time I'm going to be knitting this scarf so it's going to likely vary between like oh this is clearly when the video chat started and then it gets a little messy. Uh, we both think it's going to be hilarious so during our last video chat we <laughs> I brought my laptop over to my yarn drawers in my craft dresser and was like, okay, well, what kind of color do you want? Because I've got lots of colors. It's like, oh, I like blue. So we went through all the blues and we finally um, settled on this one here. So this is the Self Care Is Not Selfish colorway by Allison Barnes. She's a local to me dyer. It's in her classic worsted base and it's 100% superwash merino. And I absolutely love her bases and her colors. They're just so vibrant. Like, look at how gorgeous and dark this blue is. It's not washed out at all. And the yarn is kind of like a, almost a heavier base. It's very tightly twisted. So it feels like you, um, the fabric's thicker when it ends up being knit up. And I'm really a fan of that. Oh no, I didn't see a stitch. <laughs> and I'm just knitting this up on some US size 6 or 4 mil double pointed needles. They're just needles from Michaels or wherever and this is not a patterned scarf. I'm just kind of making it up as we go. So it's got a, you know, um, two purl on the outside and then knitting across and then two purl again at the end. And here is the scarf so far. So it's a little twisty right now. You can see it's kind of twisting in on itself as stockinette tends to, but once it ends up being blocked, um, it will help mediate that issue a little bit along with the, the pearls on the outside. So <laughs> here is our drinking game scarf. And this is gonna take a while, of course, but I think it's gonna be a statement piece for sure and it's definitely gonna have a funny story behind it so Pippin it's your scarf <laughs> he lives in Europe um, so it's kind of kind of neat I think that's item number two that's on my needles all right what else nothing else I don't have anything else on my needles right now I have not been knitting very much, which is also part of the reason that there hasn't been a podcast uh, since the end of May. Um, and the reason being is I've just been outside a lot, actually, which is weird for me. I've probably been outside more this summer than any summer in my memory, for sure, any summer in my adult life. And the main reason for that is because I decided to sign up for a herbalism course. So I am learning a little bit about herbalism and basically it's just like, well, these plants may or may not help with like X, Y, Z minor problems. Like what's, what's the harm? <laughs> um, a couple years ago at a festival, one of my friends got a UTI while we were camping and like that is the last thing that I ever want to deal with so I was like oh hey so one of our friends gave you like this mystery tea that she just like concocted out of herbs that she had because she's uh, she's really into the herbal healing and her UTI was like gone the next day like, that is amazing I think I need to learn this too because I will never get caught camping with UTI in the middle of the bush like it's just I would rather that not ever happen or anything else really. So if I can help myself and, you know, people in my general area, um, when we're out in the middle of nowhere with nothing else, I think it's worth it. So I've actually been outside foraging a lot for herbs since tis the season. Um, yeah, been gathering plants, trying to make sure I know what I'm actually doing so I don't accidentally kill anyone is mostly the reason I signed up for the course. <laughs> There's a lot of things you can learn yourself on the internet, but I really don't want to accidentally poison someone. That would be terrible. So here we are. Drinking. What are we drinking today? 
Ooh, this is exciting. I wanted to show you this, which doesn't look like much because it's wine in my pineapple glass. However, I brought the bottle. So this is Shady Orchard and Winery, and it's their, what is it? Their strawberry wine. This is actually a winery that is in the area that I grew up in, a small town, middle of Alberta. Like, why is there a winery? But there is, and it's relatively new, and I think it's absolutely splendid, and I love their wine, and I'm gonna send some to dip in because I know he's gonna appreciate it too. But I wanted to show you guys because I just think it's super neat that my hometown has a winery when there's like less than 3,000 people. Super neat, very cool, and it's delicious. So, yay. Okay, that's what I'm drinking. That's everything that's on my needles. What is off my needles? I'm gonna put this sock back on to put the mannequin that I took off already. Bear with me. Okay. Off my needles. See this? Now, it may look really familiar to you. But it's not. It's actually the finished sock for my pair of Stella Bella honey socks by my friend Kimiko. Um, she has her Sweet Child of Mine series and I was a tester with this sock over here for the Stella Bella honey sock back in November of last year. And I finished the one and then I put the other one on hold because I had to do my Christmas knitting and I didn't pick it up again until the last festival I went to when I basically finished off the sock. And now I have two. I am so excited. Ah! It only took like eight months. It's fine. <laughs> so here they are in all of their Perry glory. Uh, the yarns. Here's a cascade again. Uh, the toes, heels, and cuffs are a cascade yarn. Again, the heritage base, so 2575 uh, superwash merino nylon. Um, ba, 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 ba. Where did my notes go? There they are. All right, and it's color number 5720. Now, I didn't see uh, an actual name for it other than the numbered name um, for this color here so that's just what we have 5720 and then this is black cat custom yarns also a local to me dyer and it's the electric dragonfly colorway and it's on her everyday sock base which is an 80 20 superwash merino and nylon and i think the colors go really well together and honestly these are like these socks that I was looking forward to finishing last year and now I'm so excited because these are like all of the colors that I like in a sock. It's got, uh, just so you can see a little better, kind of these eyelets that zigzag down the front, all the way down the front. The side, um, there's kind of like a purl to knit to that goes down either side and then she has these gorgeous cabling down the back the spine of the sock. I'm sure there's a different word, spine of a book, but spine of the sock, kind of. Um, and it's got a gusset heel, which is still pretty new to me. I think these may be the second pair of socks that I've made with a gusset heel. Usually I do an afterthought, but I do like how it turned out. It just takes me a little bit longer. Oh, there's fluff in my hair. It takes me a little bit longer because I do have to Google it every time. <laughs> someday we'll get there someday it'll be like second nature just like the after that heels are speaking of being able to see myself I got a new phone a couple of months ago and one of the selling features on this one was the fact that there's an expandable memory card slot so now I can record my podcast on my phone <sighs> I'm so excited. I don't know if I ever told you guys this. I'm sure I did before, but for all my podcasts before, it was like, okay, set the camera up, uh, start a video, come sit down, like wave my hands wildly so I know where, where things are in frame and like if it's going to focus or not. And like, 
Okay, then I'd run and I'd go and I'd like hit pause or stop and <laughs> replay the video trying not to move my tripod because I'm like, okay, that's the spot it's in. It's like, okay, roll out of frame. You need to zoom in slightly, move it a little bit. And then I'd go and I'd do it all and then I'd end up with all of these like 25 second videos that I had to delete where I had to look ridiculous because I have to know where I am in my picture. <laughs> uh, it got a little bit easier because apparently Samsung has an app where you can see on your phones what the viewfinder of your camera is seeing, which made it a little easier. So then I could adjust the camera while I was looking at the phone and then go hit record, make sure it wasn't like in the wrong spot, um, but it wouldn't let you see through the viewfinder on my phone while it was recording. So anyways, like a lot of blabber I'm cutting out here, but now I can do it on my phone and I can see what I'm doing and I can see if it's out of focus or if there's anything like that shouldn't be in the frame in the frame, like my dresser or my robe. <laughs> it's really exciting for me. <laughs> uh, there is, there is too many times where I ended up just being this fuzzy talking blob and I was not very happy with how that was turning out. Now I have a new phone that I can take podcasts on. All right. And that is it for finished items, but oh my goodness, I completely forgot an item that I have. Oh, it's not even my notes. Okay. I have something else on my needles. I completely forgot about it. And I am not going to remember the colorway of this yarn. <laughs> Or the name but I promise it will be in my show notes which by the way now are on Ravelry because apparently I've exceeded the character limit for YouTube descriptions so there is a link to my Ravelry group that will have show notes um, in it just below so you can click there and I promise I will have the name and colorway of this yarn in the notes I've also been working on my second hat in the love note pattern which is a pattern of my own and it's releasing on august 15th and i'm just gonna show it to you because i don't really have a lot to say about the yarn but here it is and it's got um a bunch of cable work on it and uh, let's see oh yeah that'll be better okay so it's got little cables on the cuff brim that's the word brim which is a one by one twisted rib with these little cables and come up and over and up and there's more little twisty cables in the middle and then there's here on the side so this is my love note hat it was supposed to come out for valentine's day sorry dropping my yarn oh just dropped my hat it was supposed to come out for valentine's day last year and then i can't remember why but it didn't I'm sure there was a reason, <laughs> but uh, it may have just been that I didn't finish it in time. Anyways, did not come out on time. So it is going to be released on August 15th. The lovely Amy of Happy Little Yarn uh, did a test of this hat as well. Um, so I'm sorry, sorry that it's taking so long to release this pattern. And here is the original one that like the cables show up pretty well on it, but I wanted one more just so I could have kind of a contrasting colors and make sure the cables were showing up the way that they were supposed to. This was the Femme Fatale colorway, this one here, by Amy over at What's Up Yarn Co. And I'm sorry, Amy, I don't remember what base it was on, but this is another one that knits up really thick. I just really love it because it's going to be so warm in the winter. I, I finished it sometime after Valentine's Day, so between then and now there hasn't been a whole lot of winter. I'm excited to wear this in the fall. Here it is. So yeah, you have a hard time kind of seeing the stitch definition on those cables there, but I do really love this pattern. And here's the top, just in case you're curious comes together there. So this one, all I have left to do is the decreases for the top and then kind of weave my ends in, pull it through. Life will be good. I'll have two hats for the winter. I'm going to have so many hats this winter. I'm so excited. So there. <laughs>
that's another thing that is on my needles. So this yarn was a gift from my lovely friend Tanya over at Pink Adobe Dye Works and it's a local to her dyer and I will have the the name in the notes down there but it starts with a it's a gradient so it starts with a dark blue and it just kind of lightens 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 all the way till we're gonna have just a really nice light light blue at the end that'll be really exciting <laughs> there we go okay what else do we have I have, I, I had a bit of a crafting day one weekend and I made myself another headpiece. So if anyone watched the Halloween podcast from last year, I did have this kind of like autumn inspired horned headpiece. And this year I wanted to have a kind of like spring summery headpiece instead of the fall one for festivals. So, oh. Sorry, it's right over here. Hang it on a head mannequin. So here it is. I had a lot of fun with this. Um, most of the flowers are from the dollar store. I used Plaster of Paris and oh, what the heck did I use? Wire, maybe? Tin foil. That's what it was. I used tin foil as the mold for the horns and plaster of Paris and then there's some details here. So I was using felt on the horns to kind of give it some stability. I thought it would like the texture and then it really didn't want to take the spray paint. So I used my glue gun and did some texture on either side of the horns. And honestly, I really love how it turned out. So there's the front, here's the back. So there's flowers on both sides. Uh, basically, I wanted to do it so it would look fine from any angle. And there it is. He used uh, well, just you know, some headband that I found at the dollar store probably. And there it is. So <laughs> can't get it all in. There. And it's relatively light, all things considered. It's a lot lighter than the autumn one because I did use a lot less plaster. The autumn one was basically all plaster and this one at least has tin foil as the base. There it is. And I got to wear that for Astral Harvest, which was the second festival that we went to this year. And it was so much fun. It was so much fun. I kind of Decided to go with a whole Earth Goddess theme that day. I was actually wearing this shirt and flowy, flowy green skirt. I'm just gonna keep wearing this. I really like this headpiece. So there we go. We're gonna wear this for the rest of the <laughs> the rest of the podcast. That was one one really fun crafting day I had. And then at the two festivals this year, I scored so hard with clothes. Oh my gosh. I don't usually talk about clothes like ever on here, um, but I do feel the need to share these pieces of clothing. I am a fan of really heavy sweaters because it means they're going to be really warm and festivals they are typically out camping, which means it gets really cold at night when the mist starts to roll in and the temperature drops. So this is one of the sweaters that I found. It's got like super fuzzy material on the inside. Uh, it's very thick. It's got kind of a, a fairy hood design work on the back. It's got pockets. Super exciting. And it was $20. <laughs> it's like, how the heck did I score so hard on that? $20. Had to share. And there was actually also a jacket that I found, also $20. It was at a different festival with a different vendor, but oh, this jacket. So here it is. It's got kind of like a bell, bell-shaped sleeves, um, these buckles on the front, some design work. It's got like a neat little cut to it. It doesn't have a hood, but it's got a collar that you can pop up. I scored so hard. They, the vendor that was selling these, it was their last festival or their last festival season as a vendor. So they had everything on really cheap. And like, honestly, like, look at this. Uh, just, it's so gorgeous. It's not that. 
one one other thing that I got there. Um, <laughs> I have an owl backpack that I like to carry around because uh, it's, no, it's an owl purse. I have, well, actually I have two. I have an owl backpack and I have an owl purse. Um, the backpack is kind of my bag of choice these days. And when we were at one of the festivals, I saw this. It's a cat backpack. It looks very similar to my owl, but my owl has an owl face. It still has little feet just like the owl and it's got like the same kind of fabric. And he's just so cute. <laughs> So I had to have him too, and he fits my phone, and that's about it, but very worth it. Uh, and I think he's my favorite backpack. <laughs> yep, that's where we are with that. I found a lot of really neat things this year. I'm just really excited to share that. Um, what else? I told you about the herbalism already. I had my B&I presentation. Uh, back in June. So he and I, it's the networking group that I belong to. I am vice president of my chapter for this year. And once a year you have to do, you get to do, get to do a 10 minute presentation on just kind of your business and how, you know, it gets people to get to know your business better. So my turn was up in June and I was it always stresses me out so much because I don't like talking in front of people, especially not for 10 minutes when it's timed and if you go over then it kind of puts the group back a little bit and we end up running late and if you, it's just, uh, I freeze up every time. So this year, this year I cheated the system. This year I did a video podcast desk version of my presentation. So I recorded the whole thing turned down the lights, stood there, it was timed exactly how I wanted it to, I said everything I wanted to and I didn't freak out um, or get super anxious and I consider that a huge win and it was really well received. So that was one thing that I've done as well. So thanks to you guys and the Knit and Kitten podcast, that was a lot easier for me than talking in front of people and I think it was really well executed so I really said that. And Yesterday, Chris and I went down to Animathon, which is kind of an anime convention in Edmonton. And kind of the plan for me was to replace some of the art in the house or, you know, buy some new art that can go on a rotating schedule with some of the other art. And I just want to show you that really quick because I really like the things that I chose. I am a fan of the Miyazaki movies. So Hayao Miyazaki, he's uh, director, I think, of a lot of really neat Japanese anime movies. That would be like My Neighbor Totoro, Spirited Away, Kiku's Delivery Service, um, Arietti, uh, Nausicaa, a lot of these movies that I really, really love. And I was kind of looking for two pieces to rotate with two um, Miyazaki fan art fan art that I had on the wall and I, I managed to do that actually. So here's one piece and I, I got them both from the same artist but it is the Spirit of the Forest from Princess Mononoke and I really like it because it's just foresty and naturey and it's got this gold which of course I am a fan of and this replaced the piece of art that I previously had that's really close to all of my plants so now this is like my super nature corner in the kitchen and the other one is replacing actually another spirited away one so here's a spirited away themed piece also has some gold on it because this is no face from the movie and um, Chihiro and he's holding gold and it's the color of gold so I thought that was just really cool so that is also going up the kitchen. I'm super proud of that. Really, really pleased with how it went. There were a lot of people though, so it was a little anxiety causing, but overall, really good. Glad we went, got some art. I'm excited to put it up. I need to find a frame for the other piece we got, which was uh, one piece fan art. It's the Thousand Sunny, which is their boat and he's, in ship heaven. <laughs> it's just a really beautiful piece and it might make me cry because it's really sad. <laughs> so that is actually it. 
that is all that I have to say today, but thank you so much guys for hanging out. I had a lot of fun. Um, hopefully we're going to get back on a pretty regular schedule now that there are so many mosquitoes outside that I can't go outside with even bug spray um, to look for herbs because they don't care about bug spray. <laughs> so that will likely mean there's going to be a lot more knitting going on or crafting in general and that's really exciting. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, anything at all, feel free to email me. My email is mallory at justadoseoflove.com. Love to hear from you guys. It does take a little while usually for me to get back to you just because I am a really like socially anxious person and it's not me. It's not you. It's not you. It's just totally me. I have to like plan out what I'm going to say and uh, like, get the urge to urge, get the nerve to, <laughs> to hit send. So I apologize for that. I know that's no fun to deal with uh, for you guys either. So again, thank you for hanging out. Uh, if you enjoy this podcast, please feel free to subscribe. I believe if you hit the little bell, it'll give you notifications when new episodes come out. And I will talk to you in a couple weeks. Stay safe, stay cool, not warm because it's summer. Stay safe, stay cool, stay wonderful. And I will talk to you guys later.